yeah, I did change, and I'm really glad I changed. This one's wife, the Latino maid, speaks. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Quite a number of you have contacted me with regard to a video that recently appeared on YouTube. You've asked for my observations. This video purports to be an interview between a YouTuber called Paula M. I understand her full name is Paula Matinovich, and an individual who is described as an ex-Latino Sussex employee. I'm not sure how you can be an ex-Latino. Is there a procedure you go through? I think they mean a Latino ex-employee of the Sussexes. So somebody who purportedly worked for the Duchess of Delusion and the Prince of Pink Pancakes, but does so no longer and would appear either not to have been subjected to a non-disclosure agreement or has decided to breach it nevertheless. This YouTube video cropped up in the views of many of you, and you've thus brought it to my attention because you want my input as a specialist in relation to narcissism. Now, somebody called Royally Sage on X conveniently distilled the content of this video into a series of allegations that are contained within it. So that makes life somewhat easier for the purposes of analysis. I'm going to go through each of the various allegations and consider, is this something that we might, kn might know that would be undertaken by a narcissist? And then also, is it something that might be likely in relation to this one's wife before ultimately considering the veracity of this video. One of the allegations is that this one's wife is racist, rude, ignorant, and arrogant. Well, you're not really pulling up any trees to disclose that being the case. She's regularly regarded as being racist as a consequence of the way that she plays the race card. She is rude to people because she's self-absorbed. We see many instances of that. She is ignorant of the way that she ought to behave, again, driven by her lack of accountability and her self-absorption. And arrogance, well, that's certainly something that falls within her haughty behaviours. Thus, for this member of staff to describe her as racist, rude, ignorant and arrogant isn't really telling us anything new. It's certainly some things that we've seen elsewhere. Purportedly, this one's wife mocked and threatened their Latino staff with deportation as she has Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, on speed dial. Now, Newsom has come to her defence previously. Certainly, it would be the case that a narcissist would utilise threat for the purposes of assertion of control. Middle mid-range narcissists, well, mid-range as a whole, regularly utilise threat. It's easy to do. And it's pretty effective. I'd encourage you to watch my video, The Narcissist and Threats, to understand more about narcissists using threats and to understand which ones use it more and to what extent will they carry out those threats. Accordingly, again, this is certainly something that could be legitimate and that she would, again, behaving in a racist fashion, threaten Latino staff, many of whom who may well be individuals who do not have a legitimate status within the United States, that they're illegal immigrants. Naturally, this one's wife may well take advantage of such individuals. They're likely to be less expensive, and if they cross her, then she can utilise the threat of deportation. It's stated that this one's wife and Harry live separately. This, of course, is something that pops up from time to time with the suggestion that they don't live at the mansion in Monte Shitcho, that they only come together as a brand exercise. Apparently, she lives in a condo, and they only get together for pap shots. This I find difficult to believe. If they don't live together, it would be Harry who would have been forced out of the property. She would stay. She would still want the status of it, and she would force him, as the victim of the narcissist, to go elsewhere. There's no way that she would just live in a condo. She would regard that as beneath her, not commensurate with the status that she believes that she enjoys. And therefore, this suggestion to me not only lacks credibility evidentially, more about that later, 
but also doesn't sit with the type of narcissist that this one's wife is. Apparently no children have ever been seen by staff. There are no photos, no car seats. Again, this accords with something that's already known, that we don't see anything really of the children. They're spoken about, but are rarely photographed. They're rarely filmed. What tends to be shown are photographs from the past, films from the past. And therefore, it would accord with a staff member suggesting that they don't actually exist. I think it's more likely, of course, that they do, but it's the surrogacy argument that's applicable. Apparently, Harry and Doria smoke a lot of weed. That's not really a major revelation. We both know that they like the gange. This one's wife had a fight with Doria and said she'd be broke if it wasn't for her. That, of course, is something that a narcissist would say in order to hold it against an individual. Naturally, whilst of her family, she's the, Doria is the one that this one's wife bothers with the most. Ultimately... That doesn't mean that she's not she's got the status of untouchable. There will be instances when she threatens this one's wife's need for control, and given that she's a narcissist too, you'd have a situation of narcissists colliding. And in the circumstances, it is conceivable that she would hold that over her mother and say that she would be broke were it not for her. It is typical of the narcissist to hold things against an individual. Apparently, this one's wife and Mr. Marcus... Marcus Anderson, are always together. Well, I don't think that's entirely correct because we often see her without him. Perhaps the individual means to say that they are often together, that they've been conducting a long-time affair and apparently he must be bisexual. I'm not sure where the conclusion that he must be bisexual comes from unless it's the case that he's engaging in a menage a trois with the Sussexes. It is conceivable, of course, that a narcissist would engage in an affair, and given that Harry's in the sustained devaluation, it is the case that she might well be spending time with Marcus Anderson as an intimate partner, secondary source of a shelf variety, and that she's having a sexual relationship with. We have no evidence that there's any sexual relationship, and there is the suggestion that they spend a lot of time together. Again, that's a possibility. Apparently this one's wife hit Harry and made his cheek bleed. She lost a diamond as she threw the wedding ring away. Physical violence between the two is a distinct possibility. Although she is the cowardly middle mid-range narcissist behind closed doors, she may well exhibit heated ignited fury which could result in instances of physical violence being issued against Harry for the purposes of the assertion of control. This one's wife said she lost everything because of Harry, her career, and it was all his and his nasty family's fault. Again, that doesn't bear, bear to reality. She hasn't lost everything. In fact, she's gained a lot of as a consequence of them. Her fame is because of him and the royal family. Her wealth is as a consequence of him and the royal family. The privileges that she enjoys are as a result of Harry and the royal family, though... So therefore, to suggest that she's lost everything is a nonsense. Nevertheless, the black and white thinking of the narcissist is such that because Harry is painted black when he's in the sustained devaluation, it is likely that she could turn around and say, you've caused me to lose everything, even though that isn't uh, representative of reality. And it could well be the case that she would regard the fact that she no longer has an actual career as being his fault. She won't, because he's been painted black, see that she's actually benefited from the fact that she no longer has a career as an actress, but rather when they find themselves in a difficulty, for instance, with regard to money, she'll say, well, it's your fault, I had everything and you came along and you took it away from me. It doesn't bear any resemblance of what actually happened. But remember, when he's painted black, her narcissism will mean that there will be a revision of history to make it seem as though it's his fault and that of his family. Apparently, Harry didn't agree with her Uvalde stunt. She apparently said that he would be nothing without her. Again, that doesn't accord with reality, but it is quite a stock phrase that a narcissist would use. Apparently, Harry was very upset that this one's wife called his family racist, and she said that's just the way the game is played. Well, he didn't seem too upset when he was sat there in the Oprah interview when she said it. Maybe he's 
upsetness has come about at a later stage. Apparently, this one's wife blamed Harry for not laughing when she did that curtsy. Again, that's entirely conceivable. He looked rather nonplussed and embarrassed by what she did. And of course, that would amount to a threat to control. And it is entirely conceivable that she would bring this up at a later juncture, saying, you ought to have laughed. Apparently, this one's wife is nasty, really, really nasty and a bully. Her friends are nobodies and bullies too. Well... We can't necessarily speak for all of those friends as being nobodies because many of them, we've heard of them, but I don't think they're re they're not truly her friends, are they? And it's no surprise to label a narcissist as being nasty, really, really nasty, and somebody that bullies. So many of these items that have been referenced in this interview are entirely conceivable because they are behaviours that a narcissist could engage in. It strikes me, however, that much of what has been stated here is simply almost like a tick box exercise of choosing things which are likely in relation to the behaviour of this one's wife or rumoured to be the case in relation to this one's wife and then going through them all, giving it the gloss of absolute conviction from this supposed employee. Ultimately... Whilst these things are possible when looked at with the perspective of a narcissist behaving this way, as to whether it's actually true based on this evidence is highly questionable. The reason that I state this is, first and foremost, if this is an ex-Sussex employee, why on earth have they chosen to make these disclosures to a not particularly prominent YouTuber? That just doesn't make sense. You're more likely to go to one of the newspapers, one of the news channels, because it would be highly likely that there would be a non-disclosure agreement in place with a financial penalty, and that that individual would need to receive a payment which would not only cover the potential to be sued for disclosure and breaching the NDA, but also then to line their pockets further. And... It's quite clear that this YouTuber isn't in position to cover the financial needs of said employee. Therefore, it lacks legitimacy to my mind. I think that were there such an employee minded to make such disclosures, they would be going to a large news channel or newspaper, not a YouTuber. Furthermore, I understand that the content of the interview is such that at one point the ex-employee's voice changes so it sounds like the interviewer herself, which calls into question, is it the case that she has actually spoken both parts and has used a voice changer for the part of the employee? That's something that I've noticed a number of people have picked up on and therefore, again, questions the veracity of this material. Furthermore... I have seen a couple of Paula M's videos in the past that people have directed me to, and she's very much prone to talking over people and interrupting them. Yet that doesn't happen here in this video, which almost suggests that it's scripted, that maybe she had a hand in both parts. It's a possibility. Also, this is an individual who claims that this one's wife telephoned her, although provided no actual evidence that she'd received such a telephone call. The delivery of this individual as well, whereby she almost has a manic dislike for this one's wife and the way that she apparently always seems to be first to know about certain things mere moments after them occurring appears highly questionable. To my mind, having seen a number of videos of this individual which have been supplied to me by other, in, uh, other people wanting my views on them, it strikes me as that she is prone to creating news and then passing it off as an actuality for the purposes of gaining views. And it wouldn't surprise me if she found herself on the receiving end of some legal action given the allegation that she has made that she's passed off as fact. There are many aspects of this evidence which makes it highly questionable and in the circumstances one really does doubt its veracity. What I think we have here is a list of things that are potentially 
factors that could occur, given the fact that this one's wife is a narcissist, and also things that are rumoured to be the case, although there's no solid evidence to actually confirm them, and that this individual has, for the purposes of seeking to generate interest, has created this supposed interview with an, a Latino ex Sussex employee to garner views. Some of the material doesn't stack up. For instance, I really don't see as a matter of evidence or as a consequence of her narcissism that this one's wife would live in a condo. And I think ultimately I wouldn't rely upon this video in any shape or form as having any legitimate evidence. All that it does provide us with is an opportunity to consider certain things that as a narcissist this one's wife might do, although we have no actual evidence of that being the case. You asked for my views on the video, you've now got them. I'm H.G. Tudor, thank you for listening.